Okay, so you're saying that they have a half a million dollars worth of intellectual property that is represented in terms of registered service marks, Leslie? Yeah, that, that's what they're saying. They've got a, a library of documents, forms. Basically, it's all this material that can be used by their in-house consultants to help their customers who are small and medium-sized businesses that need outsourced HR. So okay. it's all these HR type documents, manuals, training materials, and supposedly every single one of them has a service mark or a trademark. How do they come up with the half million in value? Did they pay that for them? I asked that question directly, and I think it's a combination of what they've paid for it and what they think it's worth. That is what I would have expected you to say. And that's what I would expect them to say too. Uh, it, it's going to be very difficult to borrow on that, but it depends on what you want to use it for. So it's going to be hard to find a lender right. who would loan against it, particularly if it wasn't like if there's not a historical cost that they paid in a fair market value for it to establish that value. You know, when it's, you know, well, we paid probably what happened is they paid $50,000 in attorney's fees and they're just making up the other 450. That'd be my guess. So those are, those are not likely to get somebody to lend against. What you could potentially do is look at a licensing deal with somebody else to, you know, to help monetize that and turn it into value based on, you know, how it's performed in the past, or if there's an income stream that's coming from it. But to me, that all goes back to the value. I'd be like, you know, are, are you trying to use this to get money to help you acquire the business? I was considering it because, you know, it's a service business. There's not a lot of assets. That's the biggest asset. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to, because they transitioned to virtual events this year because of COVID, their costs have gone down a lot. So their numbers look really good in 2020. And they're right. trying to base the sales price on future results, which I'm not really interested in <laughs> participating in, right? Yeah. So um, I have learned a few things here, <laughs> but I was looking at maybe it is worth something. I don't know if every single one of these documents has some sort of IP protection associated with it. Or the other idea I had was what if you could take that information and or all the documentation they have and put it on some sort of a platform and then sell it to other HR consulting firms. Okay. I like that. So let's walk through the deal. What do they want for the company? 2.5 million. Okay. And then what assets do they have currently? They have the 500,000 for the proprietary library, FF&E of 160 servers and printers and stuff like that. That's about 12,000 and accounts receivable of 99,000. And then they have a net operating loss of 196,000. Did I miss one between IP, FF&E, servers and stuff, which seems like that should be part of that. And then AR was 99K. And then was the NOL right after that? Or was there one other one? That was it. Okay. And then what are they doing in terms of revenue and profit? Okay. So they've got total revenue for 2020 is going to end up being about 875. Okay. And net income, well, the EBITDA before addbacks or after, which do you want? EBITDA would be the earnings before there was income tax, excuse me, interest taxes, depreciation, amortization. So Right, but I'm talking about the addbacks related to their personal, their SDE. Give me the SDE. 176,000. Well, that's with the addbacks. With the addbacks. So they're asking for a multiple of a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. What causes you to be interested in this? <laughs> well, originally what they were saying the value was, and this was in our original conversation, they were not basing it on what they think next year's results are going to be. That's nice. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say they were not basing it on and then you paused. I thought you were going to say reality. So the multiple of 14.2 seems quite high, particularly for a business that's only generating 176K in, in EBITDA because the, you know, the flexibility of how easily that money can go away, that's basically a $15,000 a month swing and they're, they go to negative. They don't really have any assets to speak of at all. 
so they don't seem like they fit our criteria as a, as a motivated seller. Would yeah. Be- One of the other big attractions is that half of their revenue is annual recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. So they have a membership model. And I think that was attractive originally, but as the numbers started to flesh out what they wanted, what they thought that was worth, all of a sudden it's not as interesting. Yeah, I would suggest that you pass on that one. It it doesn't seem like it comes anywhere within the realm of something that would make sense to do, to even really try to do. Yeah, yeah. 